All right, day two, we're back in the gym. Today is almost purely a conditioning day and also have some direct ab work in it. But for now, I'm gonna go do cone drills. That's a set, uh, the setup I'm gonna be doing is a box drill. I'm gonna do two sets of two runs each. So one run each direction. After that, 5, 10, 5. Uh, when I'm all done with 5, 10, 5, I'm gonna reset and get ready to go for another like 1.2 mile run. The reason I use 1.2 miles is because when I run around my neighborhood, basically it's 0.6 miles per lap around the loop that I like to do. And what's nice about that is it's not very far, so I can maintain a really good cadence for that short distance. And I can really like recheck where I'm at on cadence and uh, yeah, just keep it as a quality run rather than one where I just push myself to the point of uh, stupidness. So that first one is, again, just a box drill, 10 meters on all the different sides. What well, I'm moving on next, which I actually think has the most carryover into Strongman, is 5105. And again, I give the example of finger fingers, but also think about transitions from dropping a sandbag to getting back to the rest of your pile of sandbags for a medley. In all seriousness though, conditioning is probably the number one neglected thing in the at least in the strongman community, probably the powerlifting community as well. It's just not something that we typically do. And even when we do actually do it, uh, it's usually not running. It's usually something like an air bike or a rower. But I do think that there's some value to it, uh, both from my normal job, my day to day, being able to run is important, as well as uh, just general conditioning. Even if I was just to do that conditioning right there, based off my heart rate data, I got a pretty decent anaerobic workout and I got it all in in eight minutes. So again, three to four sets of each one and a set is doing it both directions. It's really not that far. It was like a quarter of a mile of actual work, produces tons of results. What I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna go for my run. And again, what I'm really focusing on with my running is maintaining about that 160 to 170 strides per minute cadence. That's my biggest thing that I'm looking for. Uh, I do have the capability on my watch to actually track that specific thing. Quick plug, UXO supplements. I don't take pre-workout on conditioning days like this, but Charlie Mike, which is their EAA intro workout, it's absolutely money, it tastes great. Also provides uh, a lot of the additional stuff in there to help with hydration as well as uh, a little bit of stuff. And again, I'm no scientist, but this stuff that helps you uh, kind of consume more oxygen, deliver more oxygen to your muscles as you go. Check it out, link's down below. Let's go get after this run. All right, so overall the run actually went pretty decent. My cadence was way off in the beginning and uh, I ended up having to adjust my watch face partway through, but I took off. Uh, must have been excited or something, 200 strides per minute. I was able to basically start at 180 for each one of my laps and end about 172. Realistically, that's not too bad. One interesting thing though, uh, as I came in and stopped, now mind you, I haven't been running for very long. This is like my second week in a row of being consistent, which really isn't being consistent yet. Uh, my quad on my left leg like locked up really good times. Uh, moving on though, we're gonna hit up some hanging leg raises, some side bends, and we're gonna take it from there. So 
So, I train in a garage gym, I train by myself. But if you have the home gym Discord, you never actually train alone. So right now, I have an awesome conversation, uh, totally blocking me from doing what I want to do next. But it's a lot of fun to talk to these guys. If you're not on the home gym Discord and you have a home gym, or even if you don't have a home gym, you just want a home gym, or if you just want to BS with a bunch of guys and pretend you have a home gym, I'll link it down below if Brick says that that's okay. I don't think you'll have a problem with it, but you really got to check it out. At least jump in there, check it out, read the rules, see what kind of posts they got. Uh, but right now, having a conversation of bespoke and boogie with uh, bearded baby Jesus. And I just feel blessed. All right, so what I've decided I'm going to do is my last thing. Uh, totally bonus. Completely do not need to do this. Probably shouldn't do this. Don't really care. I'm going to play with my stone of steel a little bit. Just pick this thing up. I plan on loading some weight into this thing, and I'm just gonna see uh, how much I can just get like a pick off the floor. I remember seeing a video that Martins Lises put out. Pretty sure it was Martins. And basically he was just doing uh, like breaking the floor and just holding it. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm do some grip work and uh, play with my new metal rock. I'm gonna have to overlay the footage, but I uh, did get the 266 off the floor twice. Wasn't able to hold it for as long as I thought. So I'm gonna take this apart, go inside, take a shower. And then uh, I'm gonna be using some E-Stim and my massage gun tonight. Get ready for tomorrow's training day. We got some more overhead coming at you. See you tomorrow. All right, and we're back in the gym. It's day three, week three, day three. I got speed bench, which is gonna be really awesome. I'm gonna be able to focus on a lot of those cues that I've been developing over the past couple of weeks and some repetition overhead, followed with a little bit of assistance and some other awesome stuff. Now, one of the things that I end up doing just because of the way that my family situation is, is I tend to train at about eight o'clock at night. Uh, now, that leads to a whole bunch of questions. So one, I am a big UXO supplements fan, and I really do think that a lot of people should go check them out. However, one of the nice things that's nice about UXO supplements, especially with their Send It pre-workout, is that although it does have some caffeine in it, it's only about 250 to 275 milligrams, which is pretty low compared to uh, basically every other pre-workout out there. Now, because of that, I can actually take it about 30 minutes before my kids go to bed, and I can come out in the gym, and I'm basically feeling the effects of it right now as I'm getting started. So if you do train later at night and you are somewhat caffeine tolerant to it, then send it might be for you. So one of the really cool things about this storage is that I can literally take this bar and put it in the rack, and let's say that I wanted to move this bar. So like, let's say I wanted to put my Cadillac bar back over on the wall over here. Literally all I gotta do is just take this off, move it over here into the French cleat system, tuck it in, and we're done. If you're interested in seeing how this whole thing gets put together, I'll go ahead and link this video up here. You guys can check it out. So I know that some of you are looking at the Calibrex on the side of the bar and wondering what I actually get. 
out of that with my velocity based training. So one of the things, again, keeping in mind that this is a beta test still, but I can look up all my old training uh, sessions here and I can sort it by day and movement because you can log any uh, number of movements. So what I ended up doing on days like today is I have like my warm up set and then I have, basically I just know which ones I was taking uh, velocities on and basically it was set two through set nine that were my actual work sets for speed today. And so what I can do is I can come in here and it'll give me my max upward velocity and my average up velocity for each rep of each set. So looking at my first set here, I can see that my max and average is 1.37 and 1.2. So what I do then is I kind of go through and I uh, get an idea for what like my average was. So max up 1.3, average up 1.6. And I kind of get a feel for that set and how that set did. And I'll just write that number down in my log. And then I just know that I'm recording, like today I'm recording my average up. I think I see more value in my average up rather than my max up. I actually wonder if there's some, some issues with the max up because of little jolty movements. So I'm just using the average. So for set one, 1 1.16. Set two, looks like average up is 1.22, kind of going across the board. 1.22. So it looks like it got a little bit better even, but ultimately still consistent. After that, 1 point, 1.04. So slow down a little bit for number three. And again, with this being a speed day, what I can do is I can take all of this information and I can look at the weight, the load, where it was at. I could even look at it in real time if I wanted to. I didn't today, but I could look at this in real time. So let's say I was doing sets across and I was like, man, that's got to be like an RPE 9. So now because I'm recording RPE on heavy sets, I know my average speeds at those weights. So I can look at it and it's kind of like a real time check like, hey, so like, was that actually an RPE 9? Because I called something else an RPE 8 and it moved at the exact same speed, average and max. So maybe today I'm just feeling a little bit dog, so I dropped the weight just a little bit. For speed, I'm keeping the weight the same, going all the way across and basically just looking for that consistency, which, I mean, it looks like I do have uh, basically 1.04, 1.04. Heavy days, I can look at adjusting load, and on repetition days, I can just look at that technique. Again, I'm looking at potentially load and potentially looking at volume. So that's how I'm starting to learn how to use this uh, velocity-based training tool go check out Calibrex. I do know that they're offering a, a discount code. I have a discount code. I don't think I actually get anything if you go use it, uh, but you can get on the beta test, so check it out. I'll link it down below. Calibrex, promo code KurtLocker. I'm pretty sure it gets you 15% off. <laughs>
during the training session as you see fit. So if you do have a program out there and it says like a number straight across, don't forget, it's smart to come down if you need to. Next, we've got dumbbell, incline, tricep, kickbacks, prone. So basically I'm gonna put my stomach on this thing, isolate my chest, and just be working that tricep extension back. Now you might ask, why am I doing this super complicated movement? Well, the answer is simple. Ever since my surgery, the one thing that my surgeon, my physical therapist, everybody that helped me come back from a fairly terrible injury, uh, they just asked me one thing. They didn't ask me to give up anything else. They just told me, please don't, please don't do dips anymore. Like no more dips. And this all came up after I had complained that like, hey, so I started doing dips. And I noticed a lot of discomfort on my anterior delt, again, crossing over, kind of like what I'm experiencing with my left right now. And they were like, oh yeah, about that. Uh, please don't do dips anymore. Uh, I guess that dips have a habit of putting a lot of people in a really terrible position. So that's why I'm doing the super complicated move just in case you were wondering. And even if you weren't, now you know why. That's pretty much it for day three though. A lot of times day three is my favorite day of the week because as far as volume is concerned, it's usually pretty low. A little bit concerned about my shoulder. I'm gonna go give it some love. Uh, probably start with my massage gun. Uh, work into it with my Mile Rock awesome IASTM tool. And I'll probably just finish it off with a little bit of E-Stim using my TheraCup device, which I know it seems weird, but I really like it. I really do like it. So that's it for day three. Tomorrow's deadlift day. Super excited for deadlift day. I love deadlift day. So, see you there.